Hey guys, what is up? Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Today we'll be revisiting Blade Runner, in anticipation for the upcoming Blade Runner 2049. Blade Runner is a science fiction classic, directed by Ridley Scott, set in the underbelly of a dystopic Los Angeles at the start of the 21st century. The screenplay was written by Hampton Fancher and David Peoples, and is loosely based on the novel Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick. The film describes a future in which genetically manufactured beings called replicants are used for dangerous and degrading work on Earth's off-world colonies. Built by the Tyrell Corporation, the Nexus 6 appeared to be virtually identical to humans. The replicants were superior in strength and agility, and at least equal in intelligence to the genetic engineers who created them. They were mainly used as slave labor in the hazardous exploration and colonization of other planets. Replicants became illegal on Earth under penalty of death after a bloody mutiny by a Nexus 6 combat team in an off-world colony. Special police squads called Blade Runners were used to hunt down and retire escaped replicants on Earth. With a particularly brutal and cunning group of replicants on the loose in Los Angeles, a reluctant Rick Deckard, played by Harrison Ford, is recalled from semi-retirement to assist in tracking them down. The city was inspired by a fusion of New York and Asian cultures. Ridley Scott and Sid Mead took photos of the backdrop locations they planned on using, and then blew them up to two-foot models to allow Sid to work his artistic magic. That's how they built up the main street and eventually the world of Blade Runner. Most of the action occurred on the main street, but was disguised with their limited use of wide shots. Ridley also employed many techniques he'd used in commercials to move things around to drastically recreate an image or place. With two and a half thousand commercials, Alien and The Duelist under his belt, he had the confidence to make bold directorial choices, keeping the reins on the budget, yet maximizing the potential of what he was able to visually achieve. Scott envisioned a world that was controlled by three corporations. He stated that when it got down to one, it would start to get dangerous, alluding to the dangers of industrial imperialism, a theme heavily prevalent in his alien universe, with the dominance of the Weyland yutani Corporation and its control over the destiny of humanity. One of the things that fascinates me every time I watch this movie is the deterioration of traditional hero models. Rick Deckard is by all means a good man, and his job is to hunt down replicants that make it to Earth. This seems honorable until you take a closer look at what the replicants are. Genetically engineered to be identical to humans, so much so that the line is blurred multiple times during the film. They are born into slavery with no control over their fate. Is it therefore surprising that these complex beings so similar to humans would behave like their creators and stage a revolution? It's because of this that I find myself sympathizing with the escaped replicants more and more with each revisit. The final scene leaves chills down my spine, with Deckard hanging off the edge of a building for dear life and Roy standing over him. Quite an experience to live in fear, isn't it? That's what it is to be a slave. Blade Runner initially received polarized reviews from critics. Some thought it didn't have the pacing expected from an action film, while others appreciated its thematic complexity. The film performed poorly in North American theaters, just scraping back its $28 million budget, relying more on its overseas success. Despite all that, it has since developed a reputable status as a cult classic. It gained an incredible momentum on VHS, mainly due to the film's ability to reward repeated viewing so much so that it was chosen to be one of the first DVDs to be released. Blade Runner has been widely hailed as a modern classic for its immersive special effects and prefiguring important themes and concerns of the 21st century. It has been praised as being one of the most influential films of all time because of its detailed and original setting, serving as a postmodern visual benchmark with its realistic depiction of a decayed future. The film also brought author Philip K. Dick to the attention of Hollywood, and numerous films have since been based on his literature, like Total Recall and Minority Report. With that in mind, what do we know about the upcoming Blade Runner 2049? We know that Fancher has returned as scriptwriter and is joined by Michael Green, who has a history in working in graphic novels. The film is directed by the visionary French-Canadian director Denis Villeneuve. Villeneuve is responsible for some of my favorite action thrillers in the past five years alone, including The Tense Sicaro starring Emily Blunt, Benicio Del Toro, and Josh Brolin, The Unsettling Prisoners with Jake Gyllenhaal and Hugh Jackman, and The Mesmerizingly Beautiful Arrival with Amy Adams and Jeremy Renner. These movies show a director that has full mastery of his craft. 
His movies are notorious for luring you in from the first second and never giving you a second to breathe, as each frame is filled with such delicious detail. His films are rich in the exploration of complex themes. His characters often face astounding problems and obstacles that they must overcome by questioning what they are capable of, what it means to be human, and its implications on their future. This is why he is the perfect choice for this sequel. Blade Runner 2049 takes place 30 years after the events of the original film. A new Blade Runner, played by Ryan Gosling, discovers a secret that could spell the end for humanity. This discovery also leads him onto Rick Deckard, who has been missing for a few decades. The movie comes out in Australia next week and has already received favourable reviews from critics and is being hailed by some as one of the most spectacular sequels ever made. Denis has hired some artists who he admires to create three short stories that dramatise some key events that occur between 2019 and 2049. These shorts are essential and I highly recommend you watch these before you head into the film. I've left a link to each one in the description below. While the Nexus 6 in the original film had a life expectancy of 4 years as a failsafe, the Tyrell Corporation took it one step further with the Nexus Series 8 which were built with a natural lifespan. As expected, this didn't go down too well with humans who saw them as a threat to their existence and started violently protesting against them. These turned into riots which culminated into the development of a replicant registration which was used to identify and hunt replicants down. The first anime short titled Blackout was directed by the legendary Shinichiro Watanabe, responsible for Cowboy Bebop. The short essentially depicts a continuation of the replicant struggle for freedom and liberation. I'm not going to reveal anything more about it other than to say that this 15 minute short is astonishing, serving as a self-contained faithful sequel to the original and a prequel for incredible things to come. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. Bring it to me. They know you're here.